What's going on, everybody? This is Dave from Post Rock Promo. I'm here with Black Flack and the Nightmare Fighters from Orem, Utah. How's it going, guys? Salt Lake. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Our Facebook is a little misleading. Yeah, Dan I don't know why it hasn't updated Orem. yet. Salt Lake City, but Orem, not too far away. I'm uh, just going by the really Facebook. Really happy to be here with you right now, Dave. <laughs> Well, let's, uh, let's jump right into it. So when and how did you guys form? I don't know. We just kind of ran into each other on the street and we're like, hey, you look cool. You look cool. Well, you look cool too. <laughs> hey, you look really cool. <laughs> I've got a shed that we could hang out in. I'm like, that was it. No. Uh, <laughs> in reality, it was probably four or five years ago. Me and a couple other guys were in another band. Things weren't going well. The band broke up. Three of us decided, let's stay together. We still like each other. We formed this band. And we've kind of gone through a few different drummers over the years. And then finally, a couple years ago, well, actually like four years ago, we tried to recruit Sam. He said, no, he's too busy. And then finally, he was like, okay i'll slum it with you guys <laughs> i mean just so over the top level for these guys i i just it was more of a pity thing yeah. no absolutely not at all so he was in a prior band and we loved his band we loved his energy we tried to keep egging him on to, to play with us finally he, he acquiesced and said yes and we couldn't be happier actually before that kyson was in a post-rock band as well that kind of fizzled out because of people growing up in life and we loved Children. him we had played shows with him before um we couldn't wait to play with him and like he said yes he was excited to play with us and once we got kyson kyson and sam like we're like teaming up hey we should do a thing together we're like why don't you do a thing with us <laughs> well it wasn't a musical thing <laughs> so let's get that clear we were just like you and us basically it was like we knew each other on the scene salt lake has salt lake has a few post-rock bands here and there and they all know each other we're all good friends and uh love playing shows together and so it kind of like became this group of people who whose bands had fallen apart and we all came together it was great kate was uh, is our newest addition she's real good friends with sam they work together and uh we made the decision a year ago that we wanted to try to add vocals and we're like well let's do a little search for some vocalists um and eventually sam was like oh wait i have a friend kate you met her she had come to one of our shows she she, she helped me load in and load out my drums and that's when you know you have a true friend. Yeah. Interestingly enough, at least I think so, Black Flag and the Nightmare Fighters was the last show I saw at Metro Music Hall before everything shut down for COVID. And then the first show that I was at um, was with me headlining with Black Flag and the Nightmare Fighters post-COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, so we all fell in love with Kate when we met her at that show. She was hanging out with Sam. We all had a good time. And we're like, dude, Kate sings? And so like we had her come by and everyone loves her and it was just a perfect fit. She liked our stuff. We like her a, a ton. It's like a, a perfect little family. Sad family. <laughs> it's a sad family, but if we get each other. So we've <laughs> Black Flag has evolved and grown over the years. Like when you look at our early stuff versus now, it's very different but it's still the same like excitement for, for making something that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's kind of like what, what Kate said earlier, if it's not fun, why are you doing it? And that's really what this is about. We all have fun together. That's awesome. So in April, you released chapter one, why do you live so hard? How's the response been? Um, actually, we only allowed Ronnie up on his where post rock dwells and we put it on our band camp. We're not, releasing it widespread yet um in a in two weeks what's today 10 days or so we're going to put our second preview track out uh ronnie's going to show that one as well um it's actually not till july that the whole album comes out full 10 song album we've been working on it for a good year um at least 
And uh, we're pretty excited for the world to hear it. We put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into it. Um, had an awesome experience recording it with uh, Wes at Archive Recordings. Mm. Beautiful space. Awesome. If any bands out there want to travel to Utah and hang out in one of the best studios that like I've ever had the pleasure to see, let alone be in and record in. Wes is an amazing engineer. He's really great at working with the bands. He's, you know, we all, I think we can all say that that was a really awesome experience that we had um, recording. Yeah. And I would say along with recording at archive recordings, um, we spent over a week there and we lived at the studio and like that's that made it such creative space where we just we all took off work and we just stayed there and lived there and lived and breathed the music along with lots of tacos and tasty enchiladas that Kaisen made um it just it it allowed us all to be the best musicians that we could be and not worry about what's going on in the world and not worrying about work and all of that. Also, Wes at Archive Recordings has everything you could ever imagine and ever want as a musician. These guys have awesome gear. Everybody in our band has really nice stuff that they've worked really hard for. But when we got there, we we just kind of felt like we were buying a guitar at Walmart. Kids, kids in a candy store. It was like <gasps> kids in a candy store. Yeah, it was <clears throat> it was everything, anything to your heart's content. He had, and it was just fun, such a fun experience. Yeah, so. he has a little apartment upstairs. It's part of the studio. The band can hang out there. Mm -hmm. So, could not recommend him enough. We just had a wonderful time. So the whole recording experience, it was like. Let's do it. Let's find someone who's highly recommended. Our, our friends from I Hear Sirens had recommended him. And so we checked him out and we all were like, gun ho, we're going to do it. We all sold our cars <laughs> and we paid for it. No. I think to answer <laughs> your question, reasonable. Dave, the response on our new single, Why Do You Live So Hard, has so far been a fairly decent response. And, <laughs> oh, wait, uh, there's a question? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And, and we're really stoked to be able to allow um, people to hear the rest, I think is the wrap up point of all of that. You know, I should have said it better myself. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I think uh, Kate had a lot to say and what songs we were going to preview. Um, there's kind of like a method to the madness. And it, it does like tell a little bit of the progression of, of our story. Some of the early songs in the, in the album are similar to our older stuff. And then it really kind of displays the progression of, of our sound, of our emotion, of our energy, um, kind of the direction and trajectory we're hoping to go. So it's kind of fun. Very cool. So how's the, uh, the scene in Salt Lake? Do you have a favorite local band, a favorite venue? We told Kaisen that he had to keep quiet this whole time because he's just so talkative. And I'm <laughs> leaning over to him saying, like, don't you fucking say a word, buddy. Because if you start talking, it's not going to stop. <laughs> Kaisen, what's your favorite venue? What's your favorite venue to play at in to Salt Lake City? Definitely the Urban Lounge. Mm -hmm. That place is, is fun. Do you have a favorite local band? Um, it was Black Flag before I joined it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would say The Great Silence probably mm. is my favorite. Yeah, we played a show recently with them, and oh my gosh, they blew us away. They were we played with them before, mm. um, but I don't know that we like fully. I guess maybe because we had played after them before. We weren't fully like invested in listening and, and feeding off of them. This time we played before them. And so we were totally relaxed and just, all right, our set is done. We're gonna just gonna have some fun. And oh my gosh, like 
So they're an amazing, amazing band. The Great Silence. If you haven't heard of them, Dave, check them out. Mm -hmm. um, they're right here from Salt Lake. Uh, uh, instrumental post rock. No, they're like they're coast metal. Yeah, it's a little. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, but something like be that. Before Fucking we sick. played with them before COVID, they have. I told all of the band members in this they were really good before, but not being able to do shows and i'm sure they were still practicing and mastering their craft they had gotten so much sharper in the last year and a half since the last time that we heard them and it was a spectacular thing and i think black flack we were in this limited capacity masks on have to be seated venue and we invented a new thing dave it is in chair mosh pit <laughs> and i was reaching back to my bandmates and my friends that were around grabbing their collars and just fucking choking them we were throwing elbows we were like bumping into each other the whole time so if you're in a place right now while COVID 19 has a lot of grasp over it you've got to remain seated at a venue that does not stop you from rocking <laughs> It's true. I don't think I've ever had such a sore neck as I did from, from headbanging that night. Well, see, you oh, you don't remember I, I, I rear-ended you at 45 <laughs> at the stoplight. But Dan doesn't remember that. Concussion. Uh, right. He was a uh, tad concussed. No, none of that is true besides the in-chair mosh pit. Now, I think, back to your question, I think Salt Lake is very... Um, very open to post rock. Um, I think I remember like four or five years ago when we started trying to find shows, it was a little bit tougher. Mm. Uh, people weren't as open to, to playing, uh, putting post rock shows together. And uh, we, we, we had the opportunity to meet and become friends with the band I Hear Sirens. And uh, sorry, Sean, Sam's former band Donlet, like and Kyson's Sean, former band I, uh, Glaciers and Pangea. We actually put a show together where like we tried to get as many shows as we could where it was like an all post rock lineup and we were able to pull that off a couple times you know we played a show all three of us um when we released our last album we were able to put together a show with four post rock bands as the whole set or as the whole lineup for the night it was a lot of fun mm -hmm. <clears throat> so i think i think uh and now it's a lot easier to actually book shows because i think there's actually uh there are fans for it we sold out our last two shows it was really cool well yeah limited capacity yeah. but still <laughs> i mean when the capacity is three it's easy to sell out because <laughs> your mom's gonna be there and then yeah that some, anyway, some, moms, some were moms, moms were turned were away yeah. <laughs> some moms were turned no, it's a good scene. There's lots of good music here. Um, we're just happy to be able to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. That's sick. So who are your biggest influences? Ooh, Ooh I'm going to jump in. Poison the Well. Uh, those guys, I, I've always loved post-rock and post-hardcore growing up. My brother is uh, significantly older than me. So I remember my mother taking like really early corn and Limp Biscuit and um, Rob Zombie tapes that we had recorded off of the radio. And one time I was just lying down listening to some corn and my mom took the headphones off and she put them up. She was like, you can't listen to this. This is this is not good for you. And so I've always, she inspired me to love really hard music ever since. So <laughs> boys in the well, just like resistance, resistance, put more pressure on me. I'm going to resist it. But, um, boys in the well, um, Jeffrey Moriera, I think he's got some of the greatest scream to melodic vocals in any band. Um, Chris Hornbrook, my favorite drummer of all time. We get to chatting on Instagram every from time to time when I need some pro uh, tips or tricks. 
he really helped me at archive recordings where I really wasn't know, knowing what to expect during that live-in experience at a music studio. And he really came in clutch and helped me out and helped me kind of get my head straight and do the best that I could. Um, I, I would love to keep going about Deftones, but I got to give these guys, uh, I got to give them a little more, uh, a little time. But we'll get back to Deftones. I'll slip it in there somewhere. You go ahead. I think Ties of Man's probably my my favorite band mm. right now. <clears throat> Just like incredible music writers. And incredible drummer, incredible bassist. It's just amazing. <clears throat> what about you, Dan? Kate. Kate. Um, I would say Anthony Green from a lyricist standpoint, and also vocalist Haley Williams, because she's a fucking bad bitch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, ben Daughter, how they've evolved over the years has been a huge influence over me. Um, Who was that called? Daughter? Daughters? Daughter? Daughters. Daughters. No, just Daughter. I'm Daughter. sorry, you're right. <laughs> of course she's right. Uh, you were talking about my influences, right? Because <laughs> it could be yours. Well, it's we're trying to influence My daughters are my influences. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's cute. Aww. They're very precious. Becca and Celeste, come on. <laughs> Shh, going on the internet. Sorry. Oh, and beep. weird stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from an early age, I had uh, classic rock influences like uh, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, um, Eric Clapton, all of his many projects. Mm -hmm. I could keep going, but so my roots are very classically or classic rock based. Um, with that uh, good old millennial bullshit, Dan, how about you? Yeah, I'm the old man of the group. So <clears throat> if I had to go back, it was like the 90s alternative rock that really got me into music. <laughs> okay, boomer. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're not a baby boomer. He's younger than that. Um, so I was in high school in the 90s. So like Smashing Pumpkins, Pearl Jam, um, you know, um, bands like that were really kind of influential for me to get excited about music and that's when I started teaching myself to play the guitar um was in a couple bands in college I think I kind of went through a little bit of what was before emo was a thing I think we called it goth back in the day I was like really into the cure and Depeche mode <laughs> love that shit <laughs> stuff it's thing. all right it, family slips, I watch it slips out sometime <laughs> oh damn come on Nice. Um, <laughs> but like when I discovered more of the post rock kind of genre and stuff, I think my favorite is probably Red Sparrows. Um, they, the sound that they make, the the bassist, especially the kind of music that they create, that's probably what has influenced me more in terms of what I do with Black Flack is is, is kind of the sound. What I what I try to emulate, what like really inspires me, what I listen to, and I go oh, this is amazing. It's probably stuff like Red Sparrows. Um, but then there's lots of other bands that I love, all the big stuff, you know, This Will Destroy You, Caspian, Mogwai, Mono. You Russian know, Circles. Russian Circles. The list is like forever long of all the stuff I love. But if I had to go back and like what really inspired me into music, it was kind of like that bit of goth, bit of alternative rock, kind of nerdy back in the 90s stuff, 80s. <laughs> you push my glasses right back on my <laughs> brow here after that nerdy stuff for reals but that's why we that love them awesome. mm -hmm. yeah you and just... i love that you said eric clapton i didn't realize mm -hmm. that i hadn't known that because the first song i ever learned to play on the guitar like of any song ever was tears in heaven nice nice anyway. cool story bro cool story hansel <laughs> <laughs> very cool what about you, Dave? What do you like? Oof. I like uh, a little bit of everything, man. Um, yeah, Britney Spears, Carl Malone. What was that? Oh, sorry. I'm thinking of Louisiana stars. You said Britney Spears and then <laughs> Carl Malone from Louisiana, too. Keep going. I've been All listening right. to a little, little bit of everything. everything. Um, I've been, lately, I've been listening to a lot of 
Mogwai and Caspian and um, Touche Amore and The Cure and Joy Division. And uh, I can go on and on. So when did how you, so could we? <laughs> <laughs> when did you get into like uh, the whole post rock? What made you want to like be a promoter of it? What made it's you funny, want to I, get involved in the scene? It's funny because I, um, growing up, I was a big pop punk guy. Uh, in, in middle school, okay. high school, and in college, I transitioned to metalcore, and then went back to pop punk, and they did that for you know a bunch of years, and then. Uh, Last year, I think it was spring slash summer, I, uh, I started listening to Mogwai and Explosions in the Sky and Russian Circles and all the classic bands. And I was like, you know what? This stuff rips. And I was like, I could see my, I was like, I would love to help bands like this. So then I, that's when I decided to start a post-rock promo. Cool. That's Whoa. So it, it sounds like I mean, I feel like if you have a palette for post-rock, then that means that you have a good musical palette with a lot of different genres and feelings and uh, what comes with all of that. And so it sounds like post-rock kind of swept you up on your feet. Uh -huh. And I know that when I first found post-rock, I just thought, like, this is what I want to hear. These are all of the spots out of songs that I've been listening to my whole life where I just wish that it were instruments. Right. Or very delicately placed vocals. And so when I first got into post-rock, I thought, I'm going to make my own lyrics. I'm going to make my own because I feel like with a lot of words, it sort of, if you pay attention to that during a song and the vocals, it shifts your perspective on what the song actually means. And with post-rock being classically very little or zero vocals, then you get to prescribe your own meaning and it helps you in an individualized way. Right. And I, I, I feel like that's what it really did for me. And being able to maybe six or seven years ago play in a, a, like a true post-rock band, it changed the way that I played. It changed the way that I lived and the way that I viewed things. So... I, I think most people could say that they've been influenced a lot by the music they listen to. And I think that if you want a positive mind view on life, if you're influenced by music to prescribe your perspective on the world, I think that's a very positive way to go. Because as, no matter how dark or light or gruesome or pleasant post-rock can sound, um, you find your own way through it. Somebody help, I think. <laughs> Jesus. I wanna, I, I wanna counterpoint some of what you were saying though. How many? All of it. Cool. <laughs> Please do. I think, I think what post-rock allows is really just the expression of whatever the artist wants to put down. And the community is oftentimes very open and accepting to it without like the harsh criticisms of some of the other genres where it's like, oh, they're selling out or they're, they're different than they used to be. Therefore, now they suck and I hate them. You don't get that a lot. Fall out boy, right. You don't get that very much in, in this genre per se. Um, and I'm going to highlight that by saying like what Sam said about vocals. Like I used to think that way too. I'm sorry, but I don't anymore. Like there's a lot of amazing post-rock music that has vocals. Oh, Hiroshima is one of my favorite bands. Um, you know, Cult have, of Luna. Yeah, you have Sigur Ross. You've got Mogwai who sings in a lot of their songs, even though they're not like classic singers, they sing in their stuff and it's great. Um, I think adding vocals is another layer, is another instrument that adds really some beauty to the overall sound and it can be it can be a beautiful addition to that kind of palette of music 
And so we want invent. We we decided like, hey, let's grow. Let's let's move from where we've been and like actually take it to another layer level and add this layer that we've been missing, that that we don't have, that we had wanted from time to time. <laughs> and so it was like, it was the perfect opportunity to like say, let's grow. And, and that's kind of how we we were able to bring in Kate as a group. It was a group decision to say, let's add a vocalist. And she was like the perfect fit. So I think I initially started that way. It was like, yeah, vocals suck. Let's just do all instrumental. And that was from my previous experience with the prior band where, yeah, like it was a bad experience with the vocalist. Uh, and so I only wanted to do uh, instrumental music. But I think I, I got over that and it was like, no, there's a lot of beauty in having some lyrics when they're carefully done, when they're, when, they're, when they're beautifully written, when you have someone talented that can write beautiful lyrics, which Kate does wonderfully. Like I'm amazed at what she puts together and, and the way that she writes melodies is unexpected. Like it's not a cookie cutter formula for lyrics and melodies. And when she writes stuff, I'm like, yes I can't, I can't wait for the world to hear this stuff you know kate does a, a, a beautiful job that i'm like i'm excited to share it's still a couple months out but it's gonna it's gonna it, i love it and that's all that matters to me if i like it i don't care what anyone else thinks i would like to say something for 25 to 30 seconds and my time starts now here we go <laughs> You're wasting a lot of time. Yes, you're right. <laughs> I think that it is no coincidence that my, myself, I've been playing locally and determined music in Salt Lake City for the last decade. <laughs> but we're, we're flexed, dude. But I would say, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm flexing nuts all the time, come on. But what I'm saying is I have taken playing music here in Salt Lake City very seriously for 10 years. And I've played in bands where we've had a great amount of success. We've done things, we've accomplished band dreams, individual dreams musically, and that varies by level of what you want. But I think it is no coincidence that once we brought Kate into Black Flack and the Nightmare Fighters, that nine months, eight months later, a record label that we admire and love many of the bands on uh, signed us. And I told Kate, I think once this happened, because she was like, hey, I've never been in a band. I've never really been up on stage singing, even though she see it Owns seems it. like it seems like she's been doing it for 10 years. Um, we get signed and I just I told Kate, I was like, hey, this is really fucking cool that we have accomplished this. But don't think it's so easy all the time, okay? Because I've been doing this shit for like nine and a half years longer than you. So let us not be doing this. Let us not just be like, yo, yeah, fucking my, rock star. It, it takes a lot of work. My, my greatest fear is like, oh, this is how easy it is, guys. I'm going to become like my own thing and forget you guys. Oh my gosh, guys. Well, we miss your long legs and your daddy ship, my lord, but don't leave us. No, no, no. I was saying that's my greatest fear about Kate. Is she's like, oh, oh. <laughs> like my first band. We, I, I got a label. That. I'm playing shows all the time. This is easy, man. I got it made. <laughs> right. Well, I'm part of the Russian mafia. And if Kate ever leaves the band, we'll make things uncomfortable. <laughs> She'll be missing some fingers. Do you think I'm fucking around right now? No. <laughs> what about you, Dave? Do you, uh, have you ever played in a band? No, no, I wasn't uh, gifted with the ability to play an instrument, so that's why I just stick with what I do best, which is uh, promoting. Awesome. We love that. Yeah. We are. Well, I can't play an instrument either. I just pretend. <laughs> we put a track on. 
and then he just like makes his fingers move. Cool. I pay I pay some like person way in the south to like play the bass and record it for me, and I'm, I just pretend like it's me. Antarctica. <laughs> How far south are we talking? Are like we talking like Peru? The, yes. No, like Chile. The, the very Chile. southern tip of Chile. They, <laughs> yeah, they call it Chile. But I do love Chile. So now I'm going to ask you guys some non-music questions. It's a good way for me to uh, get to know you. I did this with the yeah, you the interview. You haven't gotten to know us already? Can you ask Kaisen the first one? Know you one? more. Get to Can know you, you ask more. Kaisen the first one. Non music. Oh, shit. Are right, you guys ready? I'm much <laughs> What? Oh, I'm sorry, what did you say? Not you. All right, first one favorite holiday. Oh. Favorite holiday. Dude, Christmas. Of course, Christmas. Whose favorite holiday isn't Christmas? Raise your hand if That's your favorite holiday weird. is in Christmas. Any any day <laughs> where I can get a two day break from work is my favorite holiday. So Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever I can take a break from work, that's my that's my jam. <laughs> Why Christmas? Because you love trees. Yeah. You like getting gifts. <laughs> Dude, what about all the candy and like treats and desserts? Yeah. 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 There's <laughs> always cinnamon rolls. <laughs> yeah. If there's not cinnamon, like that toffee cinnamon good rolls, shit. You know I mean? toffee good yeah, shit. Yeah, like the crunchies, no, like the cracker crack grandma makes. It's going to pull out my fillings. I'm not even <laughs> what my fucking grandma makes. <laughs> she came from a time where everyone was just chomping down on everything chewy. I'm not doing that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't like uh, chewy. What's your favorite holiday? Uh, July 4th. Oh, America. America! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it hasn't been great for a while, though, because mm -hmm. all of the political unrest. And... But you like to blow stuff up. No, not necessarily. Why? Like, just like the summertime, the heat, the like breeze in the air, the fireworks, the community usually right. comes together. That's usually it a nice time. Um, I love it because since i was seven i have on july 4th i have never not gotten a serious burn on my body yeah that's what and I'm that's about. because of summer. pure fun i'll jump over the fireworks mm. and if i get blasted with something i'll take it <laughs> very good all right well he asked you that question and then we all answered it but christmas is respectable yes kate what's the next question you know, as I've gotten older, I've had a hard time observing any sort of holiday. I guess I would observe All Hallows Eve. Yeah! Mm. Halloween is awesome. I, I love, Halloween. well, same time frame? Sure. What they call time it. Frame. Yeah. All Hallows Eve is an alternative. Dia de los Muertos. Hallows Eve. There you go, there you go, back to your... That's my roots. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going roots. back to my roots. Yeah. All right. We're going to light candles for our ancestors. Make sure yeah. Know that we're still here. I'm not sure if anyone's, anyone's ancestors are living and alive and hearing any of us. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sammy down Two in a row. row. <laughs> All right, next question. Give it to us, Dave. All right, I'm a, uh, I'm a big Lord of the Rings guy. It's my favorite movie of all time. I'm a nerd, not going to lie. So if you could be any Lord of the Rings character, which one? Legolas, absolutely. I would, I would want him to teach me how to, like, shoot an arrow. That would be sick. Is it wrong to say that I agree? I would love to be Legolas. No, that's fine. Legolas is a great character, and he has Wait, what's eagle eyes. the character eyes. that, uh, uh, shit, never mind, pass on. I know um, your my character. favorite character, so who did Gam, Samwise Gamshi marry? What's that girl's name? Is it Mary? <laughs> Rosie. Yeah. Rosie. Rosie? I would like to be Rosie. <laughs> All righty then. I would say Gandalf. You would. The Grey. Not the white. The oh, gray. when he got white, it was 
bad. He was a lot more fun as the gray than he was as the white. Right, right, right. He liked drinking. And he's an old guy. He's been around forever. It's kind of like my role is just like, hey, been around a long time. Here, where's my teeth? Where's my teeth? We we are constantly providing Dan with Metamucil. We are getting him, th- him things to strengthen his bones. And you know what? It's surprising where we find it from him sometimes. It's not in a pocket. Uh, wait, so you? what's yours? What's your favorite there, uh, Dave? Aragorn. Aragorn. Uh, or Legolas. Aragorn or Legolas. What's the character that Liv Tyler plays? Oh yeah, she got the ears and the yeah. and the water that he the drinks. elven so. the elven princess. Uh, Tariel. Yeah, that. There's Tariel, and then there's uh, Erwin. Erwin is Erwin. the girl Erwin. from Aragorn. Erwin. 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 Maybe I. Yeah. Anyways. She, 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 she's she, with the horses, and she talks yeah. to the water, and the water yeah. like right. She saves Frodo's life. I mean, who didn't in that movie? (laughs) Like, I'm pretty sure I'm in the credits for saving Frodo. My name is Sam, a different last name. (laughs) Touche. Good point. Shoot. I remember you see. I remember seeing you in there. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I was an orc, and I got my head chopped immediately. It was. It was just like quarter of a second, but I still get royalties. You're gonna be royal. Royal. That's amazing. All right, if you could be fluent in a, uh, another language instantly, what language? Mm, Mandarin, most money, I'm going. I'm working business. I'm speaking Mandarin. Mm-hmm. I'm living in Beijing, and I couldn't be happier. Yep, that seems like it's all fine. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd probably say French. Mm-hmm. I just, I just like the French language. It's beautiful. Oh, oui, oui. Yeah, probably yeah. Spanish. Espanol. Si. Spanish or German. I know, so it's like nine. Oh, nine. 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 It's my nine. Roots, it's my roots. I can be aggressive. Yeah, boy. I can say good Deutsch. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Come and see here. Schnell. <laughs> yeah. Um, How about you, Dan? That's not really something I think about because, like, I already got stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Dan, oh, uh, my name's Dan, and I am trilingual. Yet, mm, yet, um, da, yeah, how are you, Paruski? Harasho, hablo español perfectamente. No, expression okay. said, mm, Deutsch. <laughs> All right, last question. Oh, I'm hand. sorry, go ahead. Don't even worry about it. Totally. That's why he's called Dr. Dan. He <laughs> works with people who are all busted up. And that's why I learned <laughs> Russian and <laughs> right. Spanish. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Because you got to speak with all the busted up people. You can't just be like, oh, hello, how are you? You've got to say, like, Kia ora, que te pehe, okay. as the Modi would say from New Zealand. He speaks Modi. Mm. Katie Pie. Sure. <laughs> That's awesome. They'll know it when they see it. <laughs> Do you speak another language, Dave? I know I can speak a little bit of French. Oh, I know a couple uh, words in French, a couple words in German. Uh, Vasa, uh, for example. Bonjour, je m'appelle Monsieur Dave. A um, little bit of French for you. A little bit of Spanish. <laughs> That's cool. I'd rather know a little bit in all of it than all of it in one of it. (laughs) Whoa. Whoa. (laughs) Jack of all trades, but master at none. 
Non, I love Non. Oh, Non. Oh, can we talk about Indian food now? We'll do it next time. Because I'll go on and non. Non, 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 non. All right, guys. Last question. What are some places in Salt Lake City that visitors should check out? Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in Salt Lake. <clears throat> we have amazing mountains. So if you love nature, you love hiking, uh, there's like, I don't know, 5,000 national parks in our state. There's five. We call them the big five. So there's like a lot of access to beautiful countryside, beautiful scenery that you can't see anywhere else in the world. There's some cool stuff in downtown as well. You got a pretty, um, no? You don't think so? No, there is. <laughs> I was teasing. Those, those, those Momo pioneers built some pretty cool stuff um, to check out. The, the one thing I heard from lots of friends growing up that was I lived out of state were like, oh, Salt Lake, it's a really clean place. Like mm. compared to other big cities, like it's a really safe and clean place to be. Like, and that's, as I've traveled, that's kind of my impression as well. It's like, you feel really safe in downtown Salt Lake. You never feel like you're gonna get mugged. Yeah. Everything's really clean, Every, everybody's nice. You know? Like if you wanna get stabbed, don't come here. If you're like <laughs> fixing for a good stabbing, then don't just walk down the street and expect it to happen because it's not going to. Who in their right mind is going to want to get stabbed? Oh, Sam. I don't know Sam's did for that action before. I'm, I'm just looking for the street cred. I'm just saying this is a safe place. It's fun. There is everything from the greatest natural antiquities with geology on the planet to find breweries, find beers, find liquors. Um, music is awesome here. Um, it just, it has a little bit of everything. It's like- But most important, wheat. most important, it's got us. I think that's the best thing right. about Salt Lake. The <laughs> thing that I enjoy most about Salt Lake are these fine folks. Oh, thanks Dan. <clears throat> really also is a really awesome artistic community. Um, one of my favorite places to visit every month or so, they switch it up, but um, we have this art installation called Dream Age. It's over at the Gateway Mall. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of a trip to go through. It's just one of those things that you walk through and um, see a bunch of different art installations from various different artists in the community. And it turns out pretty awesome every single time. Uh, so that's one of my favorite things to do in the city. And all of these guys are my favorite things to do in the city. <laughs> <laughs> I do need to put a little plug in here, Dave. Not a little plug. We sort of are uh, missing a big part of the Black Flag and Nightmare Fighters heart right now. So our guitarist, McKay, is unable to attend. He had some prior commitments. Um, he is the heart, the soul, the emotion, the passion in our band. He plays a massive role in writing and shaping what we do. Our sound. Our sound. And the direction. The, and the way that people feel and the way that we feel in the music. So we're really missing McKay Green right now. Love you, McKay. Love you, McKay. Love you, McKay. You are the sweetest prince, and sweet dreams are made of thee. That was for him. <laughs> it's not bad of me. Very cool. Well, I uh, really appreciate you guys coming on and chatting up a little bit. I appreciate you guys supporting me in post-rock promo. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Dave. Really Thank you, Dave. We had some fun. Till oh. next time, friend. Hope at least two or three people watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, guys. Have a great night. Hundreds of thousands. <laughs> What's that? Hey, thank, thank you, Dave. Dave. We'll talk good to you night. later. Sounds good. See you. Goodbye, friend. <laughs>